Thank you, Officer Singh. Officer, first of all, I agree with colleagues and uh, earlier comments about the, the sad deaths of over 100,000 UK citizens uh, due to COVID. With every death, there are families mourning and communities hurting, and I also add my condolences to them. It is therefore important that we do pull together across the Chamber, across the four nations, across the European continent, and also globally, to deliver the vaccines to help get society back to a better place. That will certainly help the economy also, notwithstanding our Brexit that we are now dealing with. I believe that independence is actually part of the recovery from COVID and also Brexit, and also believe that it is right for a referendum to make Scotland the country we want it to be. And now that Labour and the Lib Dems have signed up fully to Brexit and rejected rejoining the European Union along with their Tory colleagues, it is then clear that economic recovery lies with independence and rejoining the European Union. Signing also, it sadly has not taken that long for the Tories to actually bring the constitution into the vaccine rollout. And daily and for months, the First Minister has stood in front of the media corps and rejected constitutional questions, quite rightly so. But sadly, this week, the Tory Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, could not do likewise. Now, previously, there was also the nonsense about putting a union flag on the Oxford AstraZeneca boxes. Now, I did not see any campaigning to get the Turkish, the German or the Belgian flags on the Pfizer boxes, and nor should we have. And Brian Whittle actually touched upon the First Minister, uh, First Minister's comments in the briefings earlier in his contribution. And, and he was correct that the First Minister has focused on COVID and not on an independence referendum. And I am pleased that he recognises that. COVID is a global pandemic, and any narrow nationalism offered by the UK government is unwarranted and, quite frankly, appalling. The countries should be working together, and, and it has been the case in the main so far, and it must continue. But that is why I, I do welcome the fact that all four nations in the UK are working to the same target of completing the vaccination of the GCVI priority groups 1 and 2, uh, and then by mid-February groups 1, 2, 3 and 4. And by early May, everybody on the GCVI priority list, including those who are over 50 and younger people with underlying health conditions, will be vaccinated. And the Scottish Government has provided Parliament with regular updates, and this will continue, and this is the correct course of action. But one thing is certain, though, that we may be going about it in, in a slightly different order, but we are all following the same targets. I'm saying also that it's astounding to think that the, the Tories today are trying to place false differences between the four nations of the UK, and they really should consider their actions. I believe it's important to highlight just exactly just the deal of what is going on with the, the vaccination programme. I'll just touch upon just a few of the things that are happening. The, uh, the GC, GCVI has advised that the, an age-based programme, as they believe it's, it will likely result in the faster delivery and better uptake in those at the highest risk. Also, the Scottish Government's aim to, is to for, have 400,000 vaccinations to be taking place in Scotland every week from the end of February. And also, it is aiming to vaccinate people aged 17 over by the middle of February, and those that aged over 65 and those who are clinically extremely vulnerable will receive their first doses by the beginning of March. And, uh, this period also covers all priority groups 1 to 5 on the GCVI list, which is just over 1.4 million people. Now, there are many other aspects that are going on, but, but certainly one final point is that large centres will be capable of delivering in excess of 20,000 vaccinations per week. Now, clearly, this is a task on a mammoth scale. And, uh, and I, I, I really support all the actions of everyone who is delivering this day in, day out, as well as the, the organisation behind it. But on the issue of a, of a referendum, it is up to the people of Scotland to decide our future. Discussions about a referendum are clearly important, but, but what is absolutely not for discussion is the fact that Scotland votes for a legal referendum on the 6th of May this year, and that is what it will get. Now, I firmly believe that Scotland's referendum must be beyond any legal challenge to ensure legitimacy and also acceptance at home, but also abroad. And this is surely uh, the, the best way to becoming an independent country. And that's why that the SNP uh, are going to seek the authority of the Scottish people for that referendum in May. A legal referendum 
to give the people of Scotland the right to choose a better future after the pandemic, and that's, that's crucial, after the pandemic, in the first part of the parliamentary term. Fundamental presenting also, it's not about what Boris Johnson wants, it's about what the people of Scotland want. And the increasing evidence is that they want independence. Opposition parties clearly have a right to oppose independence, but they certainly do not have the right to deny the people of Scotland the chance to determine their own future. The Tories clearly are utterly terrified of the verdict uh, of the people of Scotland, but this Trump-like attempt to deny the results of a free and fair election will not be accepted by the Scottish electorate. I think it's also astonishing that what is left of the, the anti-independence campaign are still peddling some of the nonsense and backtracking every turn, that even after the list of broken promises and walkers has been laid bare for all to see. Now, day in, day out, MSPs quite rightly ask this Scottish Government of what they are going to do on a wide range of issues. Now, therefore, I think it is quite embarrassing that some politicians do not want the SNP Government to actually undertake that activity. And the fact that we have 20 opinion polls highlighting uh, and supporting Come independence is something that the population are talking about, and it is something that clearly is an issue for them. As an opposing officer, it has been Always for many, many years that the Labour Party are utterly incapable of offering any solutions or vision for Scotland. Come to but they have resorted to, once again, uh, telling a lot of nonsense. Uh, but, presiding officer, I am conscious that uh, I, I know that the population of Scotland do want a referendum. They want it after the pandemic. And the actions of the Scottish Government uh, are, are very important, but, and I certainly do support Come to close, the, the amendment in the name of the Scottish Government today. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to